Hello and welcome. If you're new to my channel, my name is Christina. And in today's video, I want to share four DIY projects with you from furniture transformation and inspiration to other home decor ideas that you could easily create. I'm going to talk you through the techniques and the products that I use. So let's head over to project one. We decided to go for a nature hunt and find some driftwood and it's really dry, which is perfect. Using a one and a half drill bit, we're going to go ahead and put some holes into this. And just for the size, I'm going to show you some really simple ideas that you can do with this. Using dry driftwood can be an excellent idea for home decor ideas, but adding some other touches can be also really fun. Whatever driftwood you want to use for this particular idea, just make sure that the wood is at least twice the size than the drill bit. This will prevent it from splitting. Just using a 220 grit sandpaper, just really want to smooth out the wood so that way it doesn't have any splinter effect. And also just to make the one and a half inch holes a little bit smoother before we get to the next step. For what I want to demonstrate, you can of course use real succulents, but I purchased these from Ikea and they're actually just plastic. So they make for the perfect size for a one and a half inch. And this way I can actually just stick them in or just that way if I want, I can actually just use a little tiny, tiny bit of hot glue and that way they're just going to adhere in there for security. Now, because you can find driftwood pretty much for free, you can find all different shapes, you can find all different dimensions and thicknesses, but as I say, it is such a beautiful, natural, organic decor piece. I would even recommend if you wanted to, you could even use cactuses or if you wanted to use faux cactuses. Again, it just makes for a very easy decor, almost a little bit of a boho kind of look, but it's pretty universal. It can go with a lot of decor. I've been completely spring cleaning everything in my house, including my garage. And I still have some random pieces of furniture that just ended up sitting there. I didn't even advertise to sell it. So I thought, hey, I'm gonna go ahead and play with these and see what else I can do because I'm gonna have to sell them as I need my garage back and need to empty things out. So because this is previously painted, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lightly sand everything, but I would really like to use its original texture that I've already applied. So I'm gonna be using the Regal Select Ultra Matte Finish by Benjamin Moore in the Decorator's White as well as Black. The Ultra Matte Finish is very similar, if not the exact same as Chalk Paint. It has just a very flat finish and it's, I have all this extra paint and I haven't bought any new versions of chalk paint recently. So I just kind of want to use up what I have since we will be moving and I just really want to stay organized. So I thought, hey, let's just recycle what you have and use up the paint that you have. And I really want to show you a cool idea uh, a little bit later on in this video. So I'm going to use that decorator's white in the inside and I'm going to paint the exterior of this cabinet this jet black. This is the comparison to the Athenian black in the Annie Salone chalk paint collection. 
The original paint that I actually have on here is the Annie Salone Scandinavian Pink, and I think I mixed it in with a little bit of some highlights and lowlights, but I did use what they call a salt wash, and I will leave that link in the description box. You could also achieve that look just by using some baking powder or some sea salt and just mixing it to your paint and you're going to get a really glorious, beautiful texture. When you're using such a deep, rich color like this jet black and then you have the texture, I thought this would make a great combination to achieve a vintage slash modern look in one. I'm just using my two inch round bore brush. It's just a nice natural uh, bristled brush for textured looks. And I just, I like to use it just because I find it easy to use and it holds the paint really well when you're working on larger projects. Because I'd like to have a really smooth finish on the interior, I'm just gonna use a synthetic wall brush. This way it, there'll be very little streaks you can also add in a little bit of water, and this will help with any brush strokes. Painting over previously painted pieces is super easy. The only thing I do recommend is that if you have any fresh exterior top coat, is to remove it with sandpaper or a TSP cleaner that you can find at any hardware store. I'm going to be using the cutting edge stencils in this tile design for the interior of this cabinet. So since I've painted it the decorator's white, I will use the black for the stencil. When you have to deal with drawers or doors in a furniture piece, it's always really helpful to have some painter's tape so this way you can create nice even lines when you're going from one contrasted color to another. So I'll be doing that right here so when you open up the door, you're not going to have kind of this rigid unfinished paint line so it just makes for a little bit more of a professional look. The one thing I do find very helpful with using the Benjamin Moore Ultra Matte Paint is it is actually a paint and primer in one. So this allows me to use a little bit of the less paint and I don't have to concern myself about priming a piece of furniture whether it is previously painted or it just needs the primer base in order to prevent any bleed through from the wood varnishes. What's been interesting about cleaning out our entire house is I keep finding these little gems. And I found these two. They're actually cast iron and they've actually been painted in a white with a tiny, tiny little bit of gold in them. So I'm just gonna use a sponge roller for the stencils and I'm actually wanting kind of an imperfect look because I want this vintage and modern look. So I thought by going with a little bit of a weathered look with my stencil. So with stenciling, I do recommend to use a stencil sponge, but because I'm just gonna use this sponge roller, I kinda of want the stencil to have a little bit of a bleed to it just so it looks weathered into the back. If you use the stencil sponge applicator, this way you can work the stencil in small sections rather than one big section like I'm doing, and this will give you perfect edges. Depending on your furniture piece or the traffic of your home, sometimes it is nice to put an extra durable sealer on top, so if you'd like, you can always use a polyurethane with a sponge roller. I really enjoy using these decorative gilding waxes. So I'm just gonna go around some of the hardware and I'm just gonna add in this dark silver. All of the colors and the supplies, including the stencil, will be linked in the description box below.
When I first learned to paint furniture and playing with decorative finishes, this was one of my all-time pride pieces. It was almost my canvas as I did so many different techniques on this piece of furniture. But I think I'm just going to go for a kind of a boho vintage meets something a little bit more colorful. So having painted over Scandinavian pink, I think I'm actually going to paint this one Scandinavian pink chalk paint. A technique I had a lot of fun and I also learned a little trick with is doing paint pours. So using any of my leftover paint, I would pour it on the flat surface of a flat dresser like this, like the drawer fronts. So I originally had painted this on what you're seeing in the Amsterdam green and a duck egg blue. Now I'm going to switch it to a Scandinavian pink and I think I might even throw a little bit of cocoa in there and I'm going to play with some dark wax. So I used a little TSP to remove any of the wax that could be remaining on the piece and now I'm just going to go ahead and put a new coat. Doing a paint pour can be really decorative on its own if you have the right colors that you like, etc. I actually did it because I wanted to create texture for this piece. So just going around and pouring paint and pretty much allowing it to drip off your drawer fronts will just create this wave and it takes probably two to three days to dry. And then I went ahead and did all of this green and blue on it. But with the pink, I'm still gonna benefit with having that paint pour, allowing me to have the texture still. I've also done the same exact technique with a canvas board. So by pouring thick amounts of paint and kind of letting it do these waves by moving the board around, you're creating this wave texture. And then by applying a color on top, it just looks gorgeous. It just has this beautiful organic texture look to it. So now I've put two coats of the Scandinavian pink and I'm just really in random. There's no specific order here. I'm just going to take a little tiny bit of the cocoa and I'm just going to go around to edges, corners, and maybe the drawer poles and just add in a little tiny bit of this cocoa. This is just going to create a little bit of a low light and soften out the, the Scandinavian pink color. When I do work with chalk paint, I really actually like to work with a moist paintbrush. I just find it's easier with chalk paint. It is a water-based paint, so it's really easy to work with and so much fun to create decorative finishes with it. So to create the look that I have, it's really important to let your base coat dry 100%. I moisten my bristles on my brush. I don't moisten directly to the dresser itself. So again, this is just so that way I can move that little bit of cocoa paint that I'm applying on here. And as I say, there's no specific pattern or technique I'm using. I'm just kind of going in random. Now that I've done that, what I want to do is kind of give it more of a natural vintage look. So I'm just going to stipple a little bit of the Scandinavian over the cocoa. And this way, it doesn't kind of look like it was painted. It kind of looked like it naturally occurred like this. Just a little bit of a weathered look over time. So once I completed all the sides, I'm just going to let it dry. And now what I want to do is actually use a clear wax to seal this, which is my preferred way to seal a chalk painted project. So I also found these cast iron knobs in black. So I'm going to use that as a replacement for this dresser. Applying clear wax, you just want a lint-free cloth and you're going to just basically rub it in. It's just like a moisturizer. I'm using one of those shop towels, but I don't recommend using a paper towel as it may be too thin and it also could be quite linty. So the shop towels work as well as lint-free cloths. Once everything is completely waxed, I can go ahead and use my dark wax. And I have these tiny little brushes. This way I can just go around in smaller areas and I can add as much as I want or as little as I want. The benefit about using the clear wax before you use dark wax is if you don't like it, you can use the clear wax as an eraser. So this allows you, you're almost using the dark wax as a low light. 
So you just kind of want to create these, you know, random darker tones and it's just adding depth and dimension to the piece. I have painted a few of these Singer sewing machines and this one was a canvas board for playing with a few different colors. So I now actually have a buyer for it and a color request. So I said, no problem. So what I'm gonna do is remove the wax that's currently on this chalk painted piece with TPS and a little scrub brush. And this time I'm just gonna use the ultra matte finish and I'm gonna use the Metropolis color. This is actually a really interesting color as it is a gray but it's actually got a little bit of a taupe to it as well so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna paint the entire wood frame of the Singer sewing machine in that color the problem with this particular sewing machine is the machine itself is in mint condition and the cast iron base is fantastic but the wood has actually had its toll. So I'm gonna to have to kind of keep it into that little bit of a vintage look to it. But let me maybe kind of go with a little bit more of a modern look. So I'm just gonna do a bunch of random brush strokes and keep that nice thick texture that's currently on there with the chalk paint. And I'm just gonna add this paint and primer with the Benjamin Moore Ultra Matte Finish, which is also going to have a chalk paint look. The previous colors that I have on this, which I absolutely love, is the olive chalk paint in the Annie Salon selection, and I actually did a wash of a Provence on it. Now with this color, what I want to do is just go with the solid color, and then I'm going to go around just with some black wax for those fine wood details. And this is where you kind of take its imperfections and you want to make it part of the style of the piece. So what I'll be doing as soon as I get two coats on this piece, I'm going to clear wax it first, similar to my previous project, and then I will go ahead and apply some black wax. One of the main reasons I will remove a wax on a previously painted piece is this way I'm not going to run the risk of my new paint to peel. I go by the theory that oil and water don't mix and depending on the temperature in which the piece of furniture is sitting in, it could possibly happen. So it's just as a preventative. So it's just really easy to use the TPS or a little bit of sandpaper before you apply your new paint. Now that I've actually sealed everything with clear wax on this piece, I'm using the clear wax as my barrier. Now I've used the Benjamin Moore and because it's a paint and primer, you don't necessarily have to put a wax finish or a sealer on it. It's just as a preventative. But the reason I wanted to use it for this piece is because when I play with the black wax, it will allow me some give and take with it. So if the black wax is too thick or it's too much, I'm gonna be using that clear wax as an eraser. So it's always really benefit, no matter what paint you wanna use for your furniture pieces. If you're going to use a black or a dark wax, it's just really beneficial to have a clear base on there, and this way you can play with it. You're almost gonna use it like a paint. It's just a decorative finish. It's fantastic when you've got some beautiful wood details and you really wanna add some dimension to that. Just really important before you're ready to wax, make sure that your base coat is completely dry. This is why I'm enjoying doing this outside on a beautiful summer day because the paint dries in like five times faster because it's sitting in the sun. If you're new to using any dark wax or black wax, I always recommend for beginners to actually mix the dark or the black wax with some clear wax 
and then apply it on top of your already clear wax coat. This will give it a little bit more forgiveness and be a little bit easier to play with, especially if you've never used it before. I generally, and this is more of just preference, I like to go in small sections when I'm working with the decorative waxes, and then I can use the clear wax. Not only is it my base, but now it's acting as a protector, and I can use just a little tiny bit to go back and wipe back if I have a little too much. And this also allows it to sit in all the low points of your details. I have been using a dark, and black wax brush, like a small detail brush. If you don't have one, don't worry about it. You can just use a separate lint-free cloth. It just takes a little bit longer as the bristles kind of help move into the details of what you're doing, but a cloth will do it. You just have to use a little bit more elbow grease with it. So my original paint job on this particular Singer sewing machine had lots of texture, but because I added the two coats with lots of random brush strokes, I now have some amazing texture on here. So that's what I want this black wax to do, is sit in the low points of the texture, giving it lots of random, kind of an aged and antiqued feel. For my last step, I thought it would still be nice to give it just a little hint of some patina. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to use some copper and some silver gilding wax. To use the gilding wax as well, you do not have to wait, or at least I don't, for your um, clear or dark wax to cure. I just go ahead and apply it just to the high points of any details. So first thing I'm gonna do is apply a little bit of the silver, and then I'm gonna go around and add a little bit of the copper, and between the two, what it's gonna do is it's going to give it kind of this patina look. It's very faint, you have to look right up close to see it, but I just think it's a beautiful touch. So I will apply the gilding wax to the wood frame of the sewing machine, as well as the cast iron base. As you can see, I always just use my finger to add the gilding wax, but if you prefer, you can use a small little artist brush as well. Thank you so much for watching today's video, and please, I really love to read your comments. Let me know in the comment box below which one your favorite project was. This really helps me understand what projects and inspiration you're looking for, as well as if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and notification bell. It's going to tell you when I upload my next video. I'm really looking forward to sharing more projects with you soon. Till then, take care.